Hi, I'm Colin Clupic, and welcome to this video series where we talk to Dr. Martha Burns about the latest from the field of neuroscience and what it has to say about learning. In this discussion, we talk about adult learning development. Let's consider some adult learning and reading difficulties. For example, if someone has a problem with reading a document and retaining the information, what could they do to address that? Well, yes. Uh, your brain gets good at what it does. So one of the problems we have as adults anymore is we have so many aids to help us remember things. We have our outlook on our computer. We have our smartphone reminding us that we have to call someone. Um, and we have shopping lists and post-it notes. And so we're not really exercising our memory capacity. So what I would recommend to any adult is if you want to improve your memory capacity, one wonderful way to do that is to read. And then after you read short sections of a book, sit down and either try to write out what you've just read as an outline or as a few notes, or tell it to someone else. And get in the habit of, if you have someone who is willing to listen to you, after you read a document, a newspaper, talk it out. Because talking it out is the brain's way of recording it. it creates a tape recording in your head that allows you to hold that information a little bit longer. But the biggest advice is to use it. If you're having trouble retaining information, that means you should be reading more and trying to retain more. Oh, that's very interesting. So let's say that I was to take your advice and actually read a short section of a passage and then try to write some things down and then I looked at it and realized that I was actually a poor speller. Uh, is there something that I can do as an adult to improve my spelling? Um, you can get help with that. It depends on how much time you want to spend. But if you would really like to become a good speller, there are um, resources out there where you can start learning word families, they're called, and word categories. And it helps if you learn derivations of words. So it helps if you know if a word comes from Latin, it's likely to be spelled this way. If a word comes from French or a non romance language, it's likely, like German, it's likely to be spelled this way. Um, that sometimes helps. It helps if one thing that I have friends do who want to improve their spelling is pick out 10 words every day that they really have trouble with, that they've always had trouble with, and just pick out those 10 words, put them on their mirror. Every time they look in the mirror to shave or every time they look in the mirror to brush their teeth, they're looking at those 10 words and kind of make that day that 10 words to rehearse and to practice. And then the next day, pick 10 new words that you have trouble spelling. And then within about probably two or three months, you're going to have most of those words down, and you'll just be having trouble with new words that you're learning, and that's fine. If I find out that I'm actually quite a slow reader, is there something that I should do about that, or should I just not be too concerned? I would say you you only need to be concerned about slow reading if it's interfering with your job or if you would, if you have a limited amount of time to read novels, you like to read novels and you'd like to be, be able to read them a lot faster. Um, reading is anything, any skill you get better at the more you do. So baseball players go out to a batting cage and they have the batting cage just throw balls at them faster and faster and faster to build up their speed. Of, of reaction time. Well, you can do the same thing with reading. If you read aloud, you can read faster, um, practice reading it a little more fluently and faster. But the best, the fastest reading is silent reading, where you can anticipate what's coming. And you learn how not to read every single word, but to kind of, uh, as you get into the book, anticipate what's coming and, and do a little more skimming. There used to be courses people took on speed reading to teach them how to skim and read faster. But for the vast majority of us, our world is such that sitting down with a good novel is a very pleasant, desirable thing. So it doesn't seem to be a huge problem unless we have volumes and volumes of material we have to get through to just relax and enjoy a good book and not worry about how quickly you read it, as long as, as, long as you can read it fast enough that you can remember everything, which gets back to your first question. <laughs> Well, something that I've noticed when I've tried to uh, improve my reading is that if I, if I notice myself anticipating the words, it almost feels a bit like I'm cheating. Uh, you're suggesting that anticipation in reading and literacy is actually a normal thing or a good thing? Actually, the brain is 
is, is designed to anticipate. It's designed to predict. And um, if you think about, if we then go back to a sports analogy, if a, if a batter at the plate playing baseball can anticipate what kind of ball is going to come at them, they're going to be ready and they're going to be much more accurate in the way they hit the ball. If you're listening to language, you're listening to a lecture, if you can anticipate what's coming next, you don't have to hang on every word. You can kind, your brain is moving forward with the speaker so that it's less work and, it's in an, and it goes faster. So actually anticipating and predicting what's coming next is a human brain capacity that makes us be able to get through a lot of material a lot faster, no matter whether you're talking about athletics and responding faster to a pitch or the way a football player throws a ball or what play you think might be coming next if you're playing or if you're reading what might be coming next so I don't have to hang on every word. I can actually move more quickly through this material. So you've drawn some parallels there with anticipation and, uh, for example, sport or just, just being out in the wider world. I just want to emphasize here that uh, you're suggesting that, that anticipation in reading or in, in literacy in general is actually just as important and just as relevant to, say, the sporting field? It's very relevant. For example, grammar helps you anticipate what's coming next, but think of all the times. If I say to you, wow, I'm really tired, I think I need a... I mean, if you can start to anticipate the word that might be coming next, then you don't have to listen all the time. You can come in and out. And, and human beings are very good at coming in and out, and it allows you to listen when you have to. Think of how you take notes if you're in a class. You don't take every single word the teacher says. You listen to what they say, you kind of figure out where are they going, what's really relevant, and you write down the relevant words. So prediction is a huge aspect of brain processing and very important aspect of learning, actually.